JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 10th. I am Harala Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session uh, Tuesday. It gained versus AUD, CAT and NZD in that order, while it, under, it underperformed versus uh, the Euro, the British Pound and the Japanese Yen. The greenback was found nearly unchanged against the Swiss franc. Now the weakening of the risk linked towards the Kiwi and Looney combined with the fact that the yen managed to gain against the greenback suggests that financial markets may have traded in a risk-off manner yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European and US indices traded, um, uh, traded in the red, uh, traded well in the red with uh, Europe averaging a 2.5% slide and Wall Street a uh, 3.16% fall. As it is usually the case, uh, Nasdaq uh, lost the, mod, the most and the negative uh, appetite rolled over into, uh, into the Asian session uh, today. Now, the fact that Nasdaq lost the most, in our view, suggests that investors maintained their bets over aggressive tightening uh, by the Fed and some other major central banks. However, the probability for a triple hike by the Fed in June has fallen dramatically, and this may be because Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said um, he, has, he expects that he and his colleagues will deliver two or three more double hikes, but they will not need to use anything bigger. Remember that at the last gathering, Fed Chair Powell downplayed that prospect, but uh, the next days showed that investors were not convinced. Now, Bostic may have turned them more skeptical on that front. That's maybe why the dollar did not gain against all the other majors today. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, there is only a 10% chance for a 55 basis points hike, while the rest 90% is assigned to another 50 basis points. However, we stick to our guns that even with that, the Fed remains among, if not the most hoggish, major central bank, and thus we would expect the US dollar to continue outperforming currencies, the central banks of which are expected to follow a much slower and smoother tightening path. But if, the, but if, this, uh, if this is the narrative, uh, why did the yen strengthen yesterday? After all, the Bank of Japan remains ultra dovish. In our view, the yen may have seen some buying activity due to growing fears of a slowdown and even a recession in China, and Shanghai and Beijing tightened their COVID-related curbs on Monday. We see the whole situation as a flight to safety. Now, as for today, the release on which we will place extra emphasis, despite not being a major market mover, is the German ZW survey for May. Both the current conditions and economic sentiment indices are forecast to have slid further into the negative territory, intensifying concerns over the performance of the German economy and the euro area as a whole, which could also prompt participants to scale back uh, their bets over a summer rate hike by the ECB. If so, the euro is likely to drift lower, especially against the almighty greenback, with euro dollar perhaps uh, falling below the key support zone of 1047090 and entering territories last seen in January 2017. If that break doesn't happen today, we see some chances for it to materialize in the aftermath of the US CPIs due out tomorrow in case they beat uh, their uh, market estimates. 
Now, as for the rest of today's events, the only other release worth mentioning is the weekly American Petroleum Institute uh, report on crude oil inventories, but as it is always uh, the case, there is no forecast available. We do, however, get to hear uh, from several Fed officials, and it will be interesting to see what they have to say with regards to the case of a double or triple hike in June. Those officials are New York Fed President John Williams, Fed Governor Christopher Waller, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, and Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. We'll, we will also get to hear from ECB Vice President uh, Luis de Guindos. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, bye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.